In a surprising turn of events, Russia has defied Western sanctions and embarked on a strategic reconfiguration of its oil trade, raising eyebrows among global experts and leaders. With an economy currently grappling with sanctions, Russia's recent actions have not only challenged established norms but have also ignited conversations about its resilience and adaptability. As the nation maneuvers through these complex geopolitical issues, questions emerge. How is Russia transforming its oil trade dynamics? And could these maneuvers potentially reshape the relationships between nations and their energy dependencies? Hello and welcome to another video of Finance Sense, where we cover all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. Before we start, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below if you enjoyed watching this video, and turn on the notification bell to keep posted. And now, without further ado, let's start! Russia, known for its energy dominance, has just executed a remarkable maneuver that's reshaping the established oil trade dynamics. Even though Russia is currently facing the brunt of Western sanctions, its resolute actions not only challenge the established norms but also leave experts in the field and world leaders puzzled. So what precisely is this unforeseen strategy? How is it influencing the oil market and the global geopolitical scenario? And what implications might it carry for regular consumers? It's now commonly known that Russia is currently facing sanctions due to its involvement in Ukraine. Such provisions, enacted by multiple nations and international entities, concentrate on specific industries of Russia's economy, such as finance, energy, and technology. The primary objective is to curtail Russia's participation in international financial markets, curb investments in the country's energy industry, and regulate the transfer of technology. An additional facet of this situation pertains to Crimea. Following Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, several countries placed sanctions on the region. These sanctions involve freezing assets and imposing travel restrictions on people and organizations associated with the annexation. Moreover, some goods and commodities were banned from export to Russia, and business dealings with particular persons and firms in Russia were restricted. Furthermore, a ban on arms sales and technology transfers to Russia has been imposed. These sanctions have had substantial repercussions on Russia's financial liaisons with other nations. The ability to access global financial markets has been curtailed, rendering international business more complex for Russian companies and financial institutions. This in turn has led to a devaluation of the Russian ruble, and foreign investment within the nation has adopted a cautious stance due to uncertainties stemming from the sanctions. Furthermore, select affluent individuals and businesses have relocated their assets beyond Russia's borders to mitigate risks. In addition, trade relationships have borne the brunt as well, with certain countries imposing regulations on imports originating from Russia. Russia's capacity to secure international market borrowing has also been limited, and disruptions have occurred in banking associations. Such sanctions generated economic difficulties for Russia, straining its global financial connections. With such an array of sanctions in place, Russia's global mobility has been significantly constrained. But in March 2023, an interesting development emerged as refined products from Russia hit a seven-year peak, with African nations witnessing a significant rise in imports. Notably, the monitoring of the marketplace has become more challenging post-sanctions, with some vessels deactivating their identification systems to conceal their oil shipments. It's evident that Russia is adjusting and discovering loopholes to maneuver past these restrictions, and the shifts in trade patterns appear to have a lasting impact. Additionally, Russian companies are accomplishing extraordinary feats amid Western sanctions and their commitment to curtail production. This year, their momentum has surged in drilling production wells, outpacing drilling projects by an impressive 6.6%. Over the span of January to June, they finished roughly 14.7 thousand kilometers of production wells, demonstrating their remarkable determination and operational efficiency. This extraordinary advancement follows a record-breaking performance with an 8.6% increase from 2022, marking a pinnacle in production drilling achievements. How are they achieving this? 
It's worth mentioning that Russia has been actively fostering stronger ties with African nations to broaden their market for oil-related products. They've displayed genuine interest in investing within the continent, and Russian entities have successfully negotiated significant mining agreements with African leaders. Also, with the European Union's ban on a substantial portion of Russian oil products, Russia has shifted its focus towards exporting refined products instead. However, they encountered another restriction. A $100 per barrel price ceiling on specific products like gasoline and gas oil. A measure imposed by the G7, the EU, and Australia. This prompted Moscow to seek alternative markets for its commodity exports. Market analysts predict that Russia might outdo its previous records this year, underscoring its ongoing growth and adaptability even amidst challenging circumstances. Some experts posit that this intensified drilling could serve the purpose of preparing for an increase in production capacity following the conclusion of OPEC plus cuts or maintaining current production levels as oil fields mature. Even though Russia has accelerated drilling, this does not indicate that it will keep its promise to reduce output by 500,000 barrels per day this year. They are still working on it. The group has agreed to reduce August shipments by 500,000 BPD. Moreover, there has been a steady decrease in Russia's crude oil shipments by sea, which are now much lower than they were in February and over 1.5 million BPD, down from their previous peak at the end of April. In the week leading to July 23, their crude shipments plummeted by 311,000 barrels per day from 2.73 million barrels per day. This dip transpired as exports from the western ports along the Baltic Sea and the Black Sea experienced a stark decline to 1.17 million barrels per day. This reflects a drop of approximately 625,000 barrels per day from the preceding week. Additionally, other oil-related products are witnessing price hikes. Consider the recent development concerning Russia's exports of diesel and gasoline. In July, these exports surged by 5% compared to June, a growth attributed to heightened refining capacity coming back online in Russia after its seasonal maintenance. In order to perform necessary maintenance and repairs, oil refineries must shut down or partially shut down on a seasonal basis. This sort of upkeep is typically timed for when demand for petroleum-based goods is lower or when the refinery can transition to a different supply source with minimal impact on the market. Fortunately, the maintenance is now complete and the factory is back in operation. Following the European Union's implementation of a ban on Russian fuel imports on February 5, Russia needed to explore new avenues for approximately 1 million barrels per day of its diesel, naphtha, and other fuel products. Evidently, they have achieved success in this endeavor. As previously mentioned, their market footprint has expanded. Turkey, North Africa, Brazil, and the Middle East have transformed into pivotal markets for Russia's seaborne diesel exports. Turkey now receives approximately half of their seaborne diesel exports, with substantial volumes directed toward Brazil, North Africa, and the Middle East. Several diesel shipments have been observed undergoing ship-to-ship -ship transfers near the Greek port of Kalamata, with a destination heading for either Turkey or the Middle East. Surprisingly, Turkey and other Mediterranean African nations had already increased their consumption of Russian fuels prior to the prohibition imposed by the West. They are also among the most important markets for Russian gasoline exports. Russia's OPEC Plus alliance partners in the Middle East, including Saudi Arabia and the UAE, are also reaping economic benefits from the rerouting of trade. As a result of the shift, they are able to buy petroleum from Russia at lower costs. In the midst of challenges like Western sanctions and global politics, Russia has surprised the world by finding clever ways to adapt within the oil market. Their recent increase in exporting refined products to African nations is a smart move that's shaking up the usual trade patterns. Despite facing restrictions, Russia is proving its ability to bounce back and come up with new strategies in this complex situation. The outcomes of these moves are uncertain, underlining how we need to stay updated to see how things unfold. The oil market is changing, and Russia's role in it is something we'll have to wait and see. Hi! We hope that watching this video was interesting and that you learned something valuable. If you enjoyed it, please hit the notification button, like, subscribe, and watch more of our videos. Also, don't forget to share your comments in the comments section below. This is Finance Sense. 
helping you stay current on all the most recent changes in the financial markets and economy. Stay safe and look out for the next video.